Hello and welcome to our first YouTube Q&A. So I thought it was high time since we talk in our, my DMs all the time, all day long, to sit down and chat and kind of go through some of the most common questions. So the first segment that we have today is about the RCIS. And the reason this is such a hot topic right now is because today is July 9th, 2024, and the exam changed on July 1st of 2024. Now that big announcement was made a year ago, so this is not a surprise, but maybe some people just didn't really pay attention to it until it was relevant to them. I had a lot of people reach out to me who maybe took it two weeks ago and didn't pass. And then they came to me, got my study guide and said, hey, uh, things changed July 1st. What does that mean for me? So we are going to get into all of that as well as just some of the most common questions that I get about the RCIS. So what you'll see me reference throughout this entire video is my study guide, the Don't Miss a Beat RCIS study guide. But let's get into the first question. Can I use this if I'm taking the CI? The answer is yes, right? I mean, it's not going to hurt. But what I like to say is be super transparent. Number one, I am a CVT RCIS, meaning I cannot take the CI because I'm not a rad tech. So because I've never taken it, everything I've included in here is simply based off of feedback of those who have taken it. But many, many people have used this for the CI. If you're ARRT, a lot of the topics do overlap. I did look at the topic list from ARRT of what is on the CI and made sure to include majority of that in here, as well as your feedback if you used one of my previous study guides for the CI and said, hey Sam, can you include some of these topics in here as well? It'll be helpful for the rad techs, absolutely. I have done that, this is the newest 2024 version, but some advice if you're taking the CI and you're using RCIS study guide materials, whether it's mine or someone else's, please know that you do need to focus a lot more on EP and a lot of the valve things like mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, mitral regurg, than maybe is previously focused on on the RCIS. So just make sure you're supplementing that or if you work in a lab that does EP and maybe you don't, go shadow for a day, talk to the reps a little bit, see if they can walk you through the different types of devices, understand their settings if you've never seen it before. What are some general study tips that you have for me? How should I prepare? So I, I have it in here, so I'm gonna kind of just read some of that. So number one is you need a system. You have a lot of information. If you were in a CBT program, you have two years worth of information. If you've been working for a long time, you have your experience. So the first thing you need to realize is I have all of this information. How do I sort through it? How do I organize it in a way that is approachable and not overwhelming? The first thing you're gonna do is kind of take whatever material you are using and go through it once. And what you need to do is mark three different categories. Category number one are things that you get correct the first time 100%. Category number two are things that maybe you recognize, you're like, oh yeah, I've heard of that before, or you struggled to pick an answer choice, or you're between two choices. Just because you got the choice correct at the end of the day doesn't mean you understood why that was the right answer. So that doesn't belong in category one, that belongs in category two, stuff that I kind of know I'm familiar with, but I'm not 100% confident in. And the last one is category number three, things you don't know at all, you've never heard of that, who is she? That is what that category is. And that's gonna take the most amount of work because you're really gonna have to learn it from scratch. Like you don't know anything at all, cause you don't, but one and two should build your confidence a little bit and then you kind of bring things over from category number three. Between those three categories, you actually are gonna spend your most time in number two and number three, things you kinda know and things you don't know at all. Number two is where you're gonna start because maybe you can quickly bridge those gaps with just some refreshers of foundational information. And then number three is kind of what you're gonna save to the end because there are things you need to relearn from the beginning. Now, if you work in a PEDS lab or an EP only lab and you're sitting for the RCIS, you never see coronary angiograms, you definitely wanna start with the main categories first. And that's gonna be hemodynamics, coronary angiograms, equipment. And by equipment, I mean, what is it? What is it for? Not necessarily all the specifications around it yet. And last but not least, a cheat sheet. What you're gonna do at the end when you've sorted through all of those things is whatever really didn't make it to your long-term memory, that might be formulas, that might be medications, generic and brand names, things that are truly memorization are gonna belong on your cheat sheet. And then you're gonna take things that you're still struggling with. So let's say you still struggle with coronary angiograms or hemodynamics. Can you draw a little heart and some of the waveforms so to help you remember some of the key components of each of them that are tested on? You wanna get that 
in a place where you can write it down, reproduce it in the first five minutes of the exam so that you're confident through the rest of the exam and not worrying about trying to remember all of these things in your brain, go ahead and get them down on paper so that you can have them there to reference while you're getting the questions and leave your brain open to all of the other things that you're gonna see during the exam. The next common question I get now that it's past July 1st is, is this study guide good for the new version of the exam? Yes. Honestly, I had several pass this last week. Not a lot has changed. The biggest thing that changed for this exam is actually the percentage weight of each category, not necessarily the content. Do I need to do a lot of math and formulas? Yes and no. It's not necessarily, hey, solve for this. There's maybe a handful of those across all of the versions. The most common thing that's gonna be asked is if you know the formula. So if I give you a formula and take out components and have blanks, can you drag and drop the proper components into that formula? Can you tell me the difference between the aortic valve area formula and the mitral valve area Gorlin formula? They're very similar, but what components are different from each other? So that could be asked again as those drag and drop fill in the blanks, or it could be asked as a conceptual multiple choice question. What is true about FIC? What is true about the aortic valve area Gorlin formula? What is the constant? How much do I need to know about blank? Fill in the blank. This is a common question I get. How much do I need to know about closure devices, about TAVR? Again, although it's all covered in here, let's say this is your category three. You've never seen a TAVR in your life. All you know is it's used to replace the aortic valve. Well, good news is some of these things, there are great YouTube videos outside of just my social media videos. You can actually watch a live stream case of a TAVR on YouTube and maybe just understand the, the steps, understand what are the valve options currently that are FDA approved in the United States. What are some of the complications that we want to look out for? If you were training somebody on a procedure they didn't know about, where would you start? And that's a really good place where you should start. What medications are on the exam? So pharmacology encompasses a lot of things. Obviously all our patients have comorbidities, right? They have diabetes, some have COPD, some have hyperthyroidism. They're on a lot of different things. Specifically for this type of exam, what's relevant to your patient? What's relevant to the cath lab? Is there some sort of medication they could be on like metformin that could cause issues or be contraindicated in some way? What are the things that we put them on? Anticoagulants, antiplatelets, stuff for the radial cocktail. We give them sedation. So things that are relevant and important to what we are doing. Should I take the RCIS or the CI? And I get that same question if you're a nurse and you're asking, should I take the RCIS or the CCRN? Really, it doesn't matter. It's up to your personal goal. What is important for you? What do you wanna spend your time doing? Because it does take a lot of time to study and prep for these types of exams. And I don't want you to waste your time and you don't wanna waste your time. For RCIS or CI, so CI is for rad techs. What does your hospital recognize? If you're staying at that hospital, is there a clinical ladder? Well, they'll give you a raise or they'll give you recognition for obtaining certain certifications. If not, it's up to you. Is there a job you are looking at at another hospital where they have a preference over one or the other and one would make you more marketable? It's completely different based on your state, where you are going. So make sure you choose what's in alignment with your goals and not necessarily what someone else thinks that you should do. And the last one, I failed my exam, please help. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I might not be doing anything wrong. So 650 is passing and you tell me you got a 645. You're probably not doing anything wrong. You probably just have a lot left in that category two and category three of that I don't really know and I don't know at all. And you just need to move some of those over into the I get the correct the first time 100%. Or maybe is English is your second language and it's actually the wording of the questions that confuses you. That's what you need to focus on more so than knowledge. You need to focus on the wording and figuring out how they're asking you something and what it is they're actually asking you about so you don't get distracted by the other answer choices. And lastly, maybe you just needed more time. Maybe you rushed to take it, you had some life event go on, there was a lot of stress going on that week that can 100% affect your exam performance. So it's not always you're doing something wrong or you have incorrect information. Sometimes it's just mindset work, working on test taking strategies in itself. If you come to me and you got a 400, right? And 650 is passing. Okay, then you probably have some misinformation somewhere in the foundation and you need to relearn those foundational things we talked about before coronary angiograms, hemodynamics, maybe atherosclerosis, because that ties into a lot of the questions about IVUS and OCT and some of the atherectomy devices. If you have that big of a gap between passing and not passing, 
revisit some of those key foundational points first and see if that clarifies some of the incorrect information that you've learned. And the last category I see is people who didn't use any study material at all said, you know what, I'm really experienced. I have five, 10 years in the lab. I just wanted to take it now. I haven't had it or now my job requires it. Well, a lot has changed over those years. And remember, this exam asks you textbook, FDA indications, evidence-based practice. So what you see in your lab, especially if you've only worked in one lab, might not be the answer that they're looking for. In that case, what you're looking for in exam material isn't might not be a study guide, it might be a book. Going into Kern's book, Diagnostic Inter Interventional, going into my orientation manual and saying, okay, I haven't really dug into the why behind this in a while. Let me look through some of that and maybe it'll start going, oh yeah, I did see that answer choice. That makes sense why that's correct. So I chose this because that's just what I see the most, not necessarily because that's the best choice for this specific morphology. I hope that helps. And of course, if you have any more specific questions, please message me in my DMs on Instagram usually is where I answer the most, but you can comment down below as well if you have specific questions. But really this journey is very personal. We'll ask you questions based on your experience, where you currently work, what are you seeing, what have you done? And then we'll try to find a pathway that works for you to get you to success.